Welcome back to Earth Sky. I'm Deborah Bird with some breaking news. NASA announced yesterday that its tally of planets outside our solar system has reached 6,000. This milestone comes just over three decades since the first exoplanets were found. NASA said in a statement that confirmed planets are added to the count on a rolling basis by scientists from around the world. So no single planet is the 6,000th six, six entry. The number is monitored by NASA's Exoplanet Science Institute based at Caltech in Pasadena, California. And there are more than 8,000 additional candidate planets awaiting confirmation. A NASA spokesperson said this milestone represents decades of cosmic exploration. And also this exploration has completely changed the way we look at the night sky. So hmm, I don't know if that's true or not. Over my 50 years in astronomy, it still seems to me that we always thought those planets were up there. Uh, but still, it's very exciting that astronomers have now confirmed these 6,000 exoplanets among the billions of possible planets that might orbit stars in our Milky Way galaxy. And the next step will be to find signs of life on some of these planets. That's a big focus of astronomers who do this type of work. But we have more. Uh, here's the news we've all been waiting for. Interstellar Object 3i Atlas is doing something. This object uh, is the third known object to have entered our solar system after originating in another place in the galaxy. And now it has brightened unexpectedly. Up until now, the interstellar comet had been brightening as expected, but astronomers just announced that observations beginning around mid-September 2025 show an upward sloping line of brightening that would be typical for a comet nearing the sun. And 3i Atlas is nearing the sun, although it's not very near at this point, it's still beyond the orbit of Mars. So as the comet comes closer uh, to the warmth of the sun, the water ice on its surface will sublimate or turn directly to a gas. And the process of sublimation will eject dust particles that were embedded in the comet's head. And this gas and dust creates the bright fuzzy coma that we see around 3i Atlas along with its tail. And of course, comets are notoriously unpredictable. So does the increase in brightness mean the comet will outperform predictions? Or is this just a temporary outburst? Only time will tell. Um, still, if it maintains its brightness, it could put on a good show as it passes Mars on October 3rd. And now I want to bring in a special guest. Here is Earth Skies, Marcy Curran. Marcy, hi. hi. Let's get your visual up there. There it is. Tell us about right. this. What's going on here? Well, tomorrow morning, we've got a spectacular conjunction in the morning sky. Probably start looking about an hour before sunrise. But we've got a crescent moon and brilliant Venus and a bright star Regulus. And they're all within about a, um, a half a degree of each other. Uh, the moon is about a half degree from Venus and Regulus is about a half degree um, from Venus as well. And what's kind of interesting is that means it's covering about one degree of the sky. So if you extend your arm and cover that with a pinky, pretty much all of that will be covered. Uh, the moon will be about 6% illuminated and it will certainly catch your eye. You don't need any optical aid to see this, but this is a binocular view of what you might see through a binocular. And what's really kind of cool is some parts of the globe will actually see the moon occult or a pass in front of Venus. And those areas include northern Canada, England, Greenland, Iceland, Europe, 
and parts of Asia and Africa. So if you look out that morning and tomorrow morning and you don't see Venus, that's probably because it's behind the moon, but it's a great way to start your day tomorrow. And this is, I'm so happy that you are reporting on this, Marcy, because uh, I've been hearing about this gathering in the morning sky all month from various people. And uh, we do mention this in our night sky guide, which you can find at earthsky.org. Uh, uh, it's also, I have that link in the post description to this particular video. And this is gonna be a beautiful gathering of objects in the morning sky on Friday morning. So I hope everybody gets to see that. It will certainly catch your eye. Marcy, let's talk about the harvest and hunter's moon for a second. Right, that, that is coming up. And typically the harvest moon is in September, but this year it's in October, early October. I, it's it's October 6th. I don't remember. I think it's 5th or 6th. It, yeah, it's, it's, early, it's an early part of the month. Yes. Yeah, so the, so the harvest moon, like all the full moons have names and typically the names correspond to months of the year, but the harvest moon is different because the harvest moon is the closest full moon to the September equinox. And that's Correct. the case this year. So we had a full moon on something like, I think it was September 7th. And right. now we're having this full moon in early October that's closer to the equinox. So it will be the harvest moon, but that's not the, that's not the debate. There is a kind of a, a quirky thing going on with the Harvest and Hunter's Moon this year. Uh, and tell right. us about that. Tell us about that, Marcy. Well, usually then if the Harvest Moon falls in October instead of September, usually the Hunter's Moon then shifts to November. So we are actually checking with um, our friend Graham at time and date because we're just curious, is that happening this year? <laughs> yeah, because time and date, like I'm not sure what the Farmer's Almanac has done. Did you, we looked at that yesterday, didn't we? We looked at that. They, they did not have the Hunter's Moon listed in November either. Yes, so, okay. So, so, so all of a sudden, like, and honestly, Marcy and I have both been doing this for 50 years. Like all of a sudden, the rule has changed and people are ca calling the October moon both the harvest moon and the hunter's moon, rather than saying right. that the harvest moon comes in October and the hunter's moon comes in November. So we we did get with our friend Graham Jones at Time and Day, and he is checking for us because it could be that what happened there is that whoever wrote that for Time and Date, I mean, they may have assigned it to an intern or something who just didn't know, right? And who who kind of yeah. got the information mixed up. And then, uh, you know, Farmer's Almanac may have taken it from time and date. But it's hard we, to stand, say we stand ready to argue. <laughs> Correct, because what we found yesterday when you and I were looking is everyone has November as the beaver's moon. So, yeah. And it is the beaver's moon. Like all of these full moons have multiple names. So the September Correct. full moon is sometimes called the corn moon or the green corn moon or the harvest moon. And then the October moon is the one I think that does not have an additional name because it's either the harvest moon or the hunter's moon. But right. then the November right. moon right. has beaver's moon, hunter's moon, <laughs> anyway, full moon names. Yeah. We're 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 scratching our heads over what they should be here. Where it's folklore, so it's you know sometimes it changes, and if it changes, <laughs> we we will change too. But uh, we're but gonna we're gonna argue to, it first. One thing to mention: this will be our first super moon of the year. It's oh. the first of four super moons in a row. Uh, the, of course, the fourth one will fall into January 2026. But now we're starting our, our sequence of super moons with the October full moon. And tell us what's a super moon? A super moon is when it's, you know, it's, it's defined different ways in different places. But roughly, it's about 90% closer than average. So it, 
it may not necessarily look bigger to the eye, but it generally looks slightly brighter. So this will be yes. our first supermoon and the November supermoon will be the biggest, brightest one of, of this sequence. Ooh. So the November, so if the November moon does end up being the hunter's moon, it'll be a super bright hunter's moon. It will the be. more reason to hope that we can maintain that name hunter's moon for the November full moon. <laughs> The super exactly. hunters move. Exactly. <laughs> Marcy, thank yeah. you. You bet. Thank you for having me today. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay, uh, that is our show for today. And it's the news of today. And we'll be checking on that Harvest Hunters Moon thing. Uh, we have links to all of these topics in the post description. And uh, we will be back less than, well, just uh, one hour and four minutes from now <laughs> with Earth Sky's Dave Adalian speaking to an expert about the 2025 hummingbird migration in North America. That is going to be a really interesting uh, interview. And I hope that you can join us and learn about what you can do to spot the hummingbirds in migration. One Earth, one sky. Earth sky.